Hey garden friends, today we are out in the garden and I'm going to show you how I make peony supports. My peonies, I'll show you them in a minute, um, they're getting about this tall, some of them. They're all um, coming up at different rates because they're different colors and different ones will come up at different times. They're usually within a week or so of each other, but anyways, I needed some peony supports. Now online, there's a bunch of beautiful ones. Gardener Supply have them, um, other places have them. You may even find them at your local garden centers, but a lot of them are so expensive. And I have, I think, six peonies there, and I've got like five up front. And if I was to spend $50 on every single peony support, I'd be hurting budget-wise. So I was gonna show you how I do it very easily with some common supplies uh, and tools. So first of all, I have a cheap tomato support cage that you can get. For me, they don't work for tomatoes because my tomatoes get so big. And then I have some wire. This one has to be galvanized steel wire. This is 16 gauge uh, wire. I have wire cutters. I just had them, okay, wire cutters. I have bolt cutters because these cages are too hard to cut with wire cutters. So the bolt cutters come in handy for that. And then I have my trusty dusty gloves. So let's see if I can see in, yeah, I think you can see it. Like here is my thing. I'm trying to see in my screen, little, little tiny screen saver thing, not saver, but viewer. So this one is way too tall. I will get the measurements and put them on the screen for you. Um, so I want to cut it. So here, I'm going to put my glove on. I'm going to cut it right below this first ring. And I'm going to do that with my wire cutters. And that will mean that these lower wires will be the legs. And then I'll just have the two rings for my support. And you know what, I could probably use this top one that I'm cutting off now for something else. Might even a smaller peony or another support for another plant. You see how now that makes its own little support. It's, it looks a little small to me for a peony, but my peonies are kind of small. So now you have the legs and you have this top. And I, I would say that's a little bit bigger than 12 inches diameter. So um, I think that's plenty big, but they often recommend that you have a grid on top to support the individual blooms. I'm trying to go up my nose. Um, and to do that, that's what I have this wire for. So what I'm gonna start off with is pulling it out. Hopefully it's gonna come out e easily and not be one of those tough times. It's not gonna roll. Oh good, it's gonna roll. I'm gonna start right in the center. This is where the gloves come in handy. And I'm just gonna wrap this around and pull it to the across and wrap it around here. And it's fairly taut. It's not you know, completely taut, but taut enough to be the support I need. And then I'm gonna cut this off with the wire cutters and pull this in so I don't catch myself on it. Just pull that in. And then I'm gonna go across this way. Now I could do more, but I think that will be plenty for the time being, because my peonies are still small. Remember, I planted them bare root last spring. I have a video on that, so if, I'll put the link in the description box below, and then you can watch that if you so desire. But I'm just gonna do it again this way. I'm gonna do two across this way, so it has a little bit of a grid. And then I'll decide if I want more uh, on it. Now it's gonna try to come around because this is circular. So I'm just gonna be careful about how I do this. And just wrap it around a little bit. Oh, I could just go like this instead of recutting it and doing that. I'll just wrap it around. I'm always thinking of new ways to do things. And then I'll pull it across to here.
And you know what? I think it does need another piece across that way. So before I do that, I'm going to come across. Do I want to come across the center? Let's see. Yeah, the center will be good. Now this is not perfectly gridded like you find on things, but it will do the job. And that's what we're worried about. Not being pretty per se, because um, it's going to be totally hidden once the peonies grow through. We just want to support the blooms. So I'll hold this up for you so you can see what I have done after I get this safely out of the way. So you see that? I have the one going here and I have three going this way. So I think that probably could be good enough, but I'm gonna go across this way in this on this side one more time. And that really will be supportive of the peonies. Peony blooms, they could get quite heavy and if you get rain, it can really make them drop to the ground. And um, I'm gonna weave it in and out of this top ones. I'm just leaving it in the thing slid around. I'm just going to bring it back to where I want it and attach this one to this side. I will have to cut this because going in between that one's going to be too hard. But I'll cut it and then wrap it around here. There we go. Gloves come in super handy for that. Now, like I said, it's not an even grid, but it's gonna work just fine. This one can move over this way a little bit, tighten it up. I know you're not right on top of me, but you know, I know you're wise enough to get the idea. So there we have the grid. Now let's go put it on top of our peony. I wanted to say, I think these supports only costed me like two or three dollars a piece. They were not very expensive at all. And um, I can get quite a few for $50 that would cost me for one. So let's go put it on our peony. See how it works. I just wanted to show you this second one I did. Now, after doing the first one, I realized I could go about this a little bit easier. And once I started the wire here, that way it wouldn't slide across here. And I did it here, I just wrapped it around and then I kind of went kitty corner and there. So it's almost like a five point star, but I didn't have to cut it. I only cut it the one time after I got it back over here. And I just kind of wound it here. It doesn't have to be a perfect grid, just has to be a sort of a mesh so that it will support. So I just wanted to give you that little hint after I did it. Sometimes when you do something once, you figure out a better way. So I just wanted to show you that it doesn't have to be done one particular way. Find out how it works best for you and go with it. All right, so here is the peony. And here is my cage I just made for it. I'm just gonna gently put it over top and sink it down in the soil. And then as it grows, I'm going to thread these stalks with the blooms through the mesh on the top to support it. Now, it doesn't look super pretty right now, but it's also not gargantuanly ugly in the garden. And I've got another one right there. I put stakes so I would remember where they were. It's much smaller. I'll, well, let me get you close up to that one. So let me reach down there. Right here is the next one that I need to put a support around. And you notice how that one's much smaller than the last one. And then right here, you can see right there is another one that I'm going to support. So you can see how each and every one of them is a little bit different size. And like I said, that could be from the colors, so the variety and uh, where they're placed. But I think these are because they're different varieties. But I will continue to make my supports and then put them on it, them. And I don't know if I have enough of these tomato cages. I may have to get some more. But also, let me get another one that I could show you. Let me move down. Okay. Right where this stick is, right here, 
There is one coming up very tiny. I don't know if we can see that. Yeah, you can see that. But I also have these cages. Let me see if I can get this one up. Or if it's, yeah. Now these cages, see how it has the spike right here on the bottom? These I made from the concrete uh, mesh that you can buy in sheets. You can also buy them in rolls, but the rolls are so big, they're a little unwieldy for me. But I can place that over them. You can make it shorter, what have you, and that will also could be a support and um, very inexpensive. This is really over here for my delphiniums that I have growing over here. So that supports them. Anyways, you can go watch my video. So I hope you found that helpful in how to make your own peony supports that will do the job for you. And you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and test this lower piece around one of the smaller ones and see how it works out. It may be suitable for the early, uh, the young plants. Now I planted them last year. It will take a good three years before they really are putting on the prolific blooms. So I can get away with something smaller like this too. Um, I think once they're bigger, those other ones will work, but I will share if I need to upgrade in any way to a larger size support in the future. So I have been so enjoying my daffodils out here. I don't know if you can see these. Um, I struggle, oh, this one's really pretty. I got a mix um, from Longfield Gardens, I did, did. And it was like end of the season in the fall and it was just uh, on sale. <laughs> And I knew that the gophers just don't bother to the daffodils and the daffodils have really um, propagated themselves. And so I thought, you know, instead of tulips and replanting every year and the gophers eating a lot of them, I would start putting in masses of daffodils everywhere and just enjoy them for the early spring bloom. And even though it's turned really, really cold uh, this past week, yesterday it rained all day. Not complaining, it's good in California. Um, I get to get out here on days where it's a little bit warmer and it's actually sunny and so enjoy these daffodils in my garden. So if you struggle with gophers or if you are just getting older like me and don't want to have to replant every fall like with tulips, go for some beautiful daffodils. There's so many colors. I'm looking at heirloom daffodils right now. They're supposed to be pretty tough. A heritage ones like from the 1700s, etc. Um, I just think they would be fascinating to have in the garden. And many that we find that are still popular are heirlooms like Mount Hood um, and others. Um, Thalia, I think is another one. But just look at this, this has got the orange. I gotta get some pictures because I wanna paint these uh, and maybe do a couple of demos for you uh, on my painting blog. But anyways, so just a shout out for some daffodil. This was a um, naturalizing mix, so Look for that in the fall if you want, or if you want a particular variety or color, go for it. I do know I want um, some doubles. I When we were down at the Ironstone Winery, uh, they always have barrels and barrels of daffodils in the spring, and they had some beautiful ones. I swore they looked like whipped cream, and I just, I enjoyed them thoroughly. So.